Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a handful of tips on how to spend less on your wardrobe without compromising on looking great. So I have five tips to share with you guys today and number one is to buy second hand. Now I know that might seem like a bit of an obvious one to many of you because since discussing second hand clothing a little bit more here on my channel and on my Instagram, lots of you have been saying, I've been shopping secondhand for years since I was a kid. My mum told me to shop secondhand and that's how we've always shopped. And that is amazing. However, there are still so many people out there who have never bought a single item secondhand, which is why I introduced my hashtag, hashtag secondhand but grand. And there are now thousands of you sharing to this hashtag, which is amazing. So thank you so much. And the idea of this hashtag is that I want to change the minds of those of you who used to think like I did. I was definitely one of those people that was put off buying secondhand because of smells, stains, condition of clothing and I think in my head I had a bit of a stigma about it but you essentially just have to dive in head first, get looking on eBay, Depop. A lot of items don't necessarily have to be really old and bobbly. You can find a lot of items which have been worn once, twice, which are in amazing condition. Now I have my rail here, which is full of a few of my secondhand purchases. And I just want to say that buying secondhand can suit any budget. So regardless of your budget, secondhand shopping is still a win. So even if like me, you love a luxury brand, you can still shop secondhand. In fact, I'd say it's the better way to shop when you're buying things secondhand. I've just realized I haven't got it on my rail, but we only have to look at my Saint Laurent coat, which was in my secondhand haul that I bought. And the saving on that, I think was over a thousand pounds and it was practically brand new. It had been worn like once or twice. So I think things like that is amazing to buy secondhand. However, if you're on much more of a budget, that doesn't necessarily mean that you still can't buy a premium brand. So I'm going to just use this blazer as an example. This blazer is a vintage men's blazer. Again, it was in my secondhand haul. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave an I button above and a link down below in the description box if you want to watch it later. Um, vintage Burberry and I got this for £9.50. £9.50. So even if you're on a super tight budget. This is beautiful. It is wool. It's gorgeous. So you can still buy luxury, but for much, much less. And the point with that is, is that regardless of your budget, I think by buying secondhand, you can slightly elevate the quality and the standard of clothing that you're buying. Okay, moving on to point number two, and that is to think twice before you click buy or before you take your item to the cash register. Cash register? To the till, I'm sorry, I'm not American. When you take your item to the till. So this point is about a more considered thought process when you're making a purchase, whether it be new or even whether it be something that's secondhand. Because let's face it, we've all been swept away in a bidding war before and it can lead to overpaying for stuff that you potentially might not have even wanted in the first place just because you get swept away in the eBay mania. So to avoid buying on impulse, I would ask yourself a few questions first. Number one, once you've seen this item and it's sparked joy within you and you're like, I need it, immediately you have that impulse to buy the item. Stop and think, do I need this? Is it too similar to something I already own? If I already own that item, do I prefer this more? And then you could get rid of the other item, which is something that I'm gonna address in a later point. It's just to think about, do I really need this or am I just buying it because I have seen 20 influencers post this same, let's use Dior as an example, handbag at the exact same time on the exact same day. It's just about thinking more about why are you wanting to buy this? Question number two, what will I wear this with? Like, what is there stuff in my wardrobe that I can style this with? And this is one thing that I have made a massive mistake in doing over the years, and that's buying something because I really like it, but then having nothing in my wardrobe that would really go with it. So then I've had to buy additional items to go with that item, and it just kind of spirals out of control. And third question is, 
Is it me? So does it suit your style? Is it you or have you seen it on someone whose style you love, but whose style you don't necessarily embody yourself? Because this is another thing that I have been guilty of doing. I have a very basic style, but I have definitely seen handbags and shoes. I go back to the Gucci loafers with the fur. I've seen them and I've thought they're really cool, but they're not me. Like I haven't worn them enough because they're not me. They don't fit into my wardrobe and they don't fit in with my style. And that comes to the last question, which is, will I wear it enough for the money that I'm paying out for it? So I'm just gonna use those Gucci loafers as an example again. They cost me, Oh, I think they were 850 pounds, which is just sickening. They are going to be going up for sale if anyone thinks that they are their style. Um, but I have worn them about six times. I think they're actually an in the house slipper, but I wouldn't wear them in the house because I would just feel ridiculous. Um, to be honest with you, I felt ridiculous wearing them out of the house as well, but 850 pounds and I have worn them no more than five times. It makes me feel sick to think about. So just really, really expand your thought process. Right, now I have one last tip within this second tip. It's a tip within a tip. And this is to kind of, for anyone out there who is perhaps a little bit of a shopaholic, who needs to kind of get that urge of adding something into your basket out the way. This is something which I have used, a method, if you will, that I've used over the last, I'd say maybe about six years, even before I started thinking about shopping more consciously. This was just something I always used to do. And it is to go ahead and add the items or item to your basket that you're kind of lusting over. If you're, you've just been paid and you're feeling a bit spendy and you go onto your favorite website and you go and add loads of stuff into your basket, Far away, go ahead and do that, but don't purchase anything. Leave it sat in your basket, go away, go make a cup of tea. I would say my kind of time frame for leaving things in your basket is about an hour if you're really keen and you wanna go back and check. Otherwise leave it for a day because I think that when you'll go back to your basket, and this is something that I personally do, and I find that this is what happens. I go back to my basket and I've actually lost my initial spark of joy for these items that I've initially gone, oh, I need that, add it, to, add it, add it, add it, add it to my basket. So you kind of, the impulse of purchasing all of these items or one item or whatever it is you're buying kind of drains away and your, you know, sense comes back, <laughs> your common sense comes back and you're like, hang on a minute, no. That was just a bit of like payday emotion coming out in me. So that is my tip. Add stuff to your basket, but leave it in your basket and come back to it later. Moving on to tip number three, which is wardrobe maintenance and how to look after your clothes, how to care for them, how to give them a new lease of life. So I've spoken about this before, but my number one tip for knitwear is to invest in a de-bobbler, de whatever we're calling them. I bought mine on Amazon. They're really affordable. They last for years and years and years. They're battery operated and they will just give your knitwear a new lease of life by removing all them bubbles. It's also about learning how to correctly wash your clothes. So I get a lot of questions on this and I know I keep saying this, but it is gonna be a video that we put some more time and effort into, but we will make this very soon for you guys. And that's just gonna be my tips on how to care for your clothes and how to wash them. Um, but read the labels, read the care labels. Do a little bit of research online, see what other people suggest. Um, a lot of the time I get questions about how to wash knitwear, cashmere in particular, and sometimes the label on the inside of the garment says to wash it on warm. No, like my biggest tip would be if in doubt, wash everything and anything on the cold setting. So long as you're on a cold setting, you should be okay because it's actually temperature which causes shrinkage in most garments. It also comes down to changing our mindsets when it comes to clothing and or accessories that develop a fault because I think we all in some way undervalue what these items are worth. So let's say for example, you have a coat. I've definitely been guilty of doing this and you put your hands in the pockets and you feel a hole in the pocket. For some reason, 
because we're all trained to want new, 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 and I suppose we kind of make an excuse for ourselves, but for some reason, my brain would go, it doesn't so much anymore, but at one time it went, hole in the pocket, therefore it's old, I've worn it too much, need to replace it. And that would kind of be my train of thought, not coat has a hole, maybe I should fix it. <laughs> because it's literally a hole in the pocket you can't even see in the pocket so it's not as if your coat you know looks a bit shoddy or it looks old and fall into pieces and the sleeves falling off it's just a hole in the pocket a simple repair that you don't even need to take to a tailor obviously there are lots of other things if you have a bit of a seam split somewhere that could be something that could be repaired by a professional but again it's about looking at things and thinking actually is it more expensive or is it not as good to replace this item with something new or do I love this item enough that I should perhaps just invest a little bit of money or even if it's not a massive fault to just invest a bit of time into fixing it and again I know it seems a little bit obvious and I'm sure there's lots of you that already do this but it's just about showing a little bit more care to the things that are in your wardrobe to make them last longer. So with shoes and boots, use that protection spray, leather goods, use leather conditioner, because I guarantee you it will prolong the life of your accessories so much longer. Moth protection, using the right hangers, displaying, or I say displaying, storing your clothes, your accessories, your jewelry even in the correct way. This will all give everything everything so much more of a longer life. Right, tip number four kind of has two points to it. So it's to get inspired and to train yourself to be content with what you already have and to wear what you already have more. Now that latter point is something that I'm still trying to work on personally. That said, finding inspiration is something that I do do. So I've mentioned before about Pinterest. In fact, I've spoken about Pinterest quite a lot in several of my videos. I use Pinterest definitely on a weekly basis. I love it. And when it comes to finding different ways to style what you already have in your wardrobe, I think Pinterest is great for that. So my style, for example, is quite minimal, classic. I wear a lot of basics. I wear a lot of um, the same kind of thing. So I love my blazers, I love my outerwear, I love denim, um, cashmere when it comes to winter. So I have all of these core items within my wardrobe. So I'm probably a good example of this. I bet a lot of you, when you see something, perhaps an outfit that I'm wearing, I bet you probably own a lot of those basics already, or at least a similar version of. So what I would do is encourage you to, if you see me wearing an outfit, maybe just go and, I believe this is called shopping your own wardrobe, and to go have a look in your wardrobe and to see if you can put together a similar outfit, rather than seeing me wearing a black coat and thinking I need to go and buy that exact black coat. Perhaps you've already got a black coat that you could style that similar outfit with. And I think just by doing this, it just utilizes and it trains us to think a little bit more differently and to appreciate what we do already own. Right, my fifth and final tip is probably one of my favorites because it is to sell, to buy. And this is one of my favorites because it doesn't involve dipping into your wage packet. Woohoo! And it also starts off with doing a big wardrobe reorganize or cleanse, detox, whatever you wanna call it. Go through your wardrobe, veto anything that you just feel, you don't feel comfortable in, you don't feel confident in, stuff that doesn't fit. For whatever reason you don't want that item, take it to one side and pop everything back into your wardrobe. Then assess that wardrobe as you have it in full. Make a little list for yourself and think, right, based on my Pinterest board or my inspo, you know, what do I want? Then you have your pile of all your unwanted items. Sell them. They are worth money. I guarantee you they are worth money because you then use that money to invest back in your wardrobe. And as I said at the beginning of this point, it doesn't involve touching your wage packet. It's also a really good way to kind of make you budget because let's say you've earned 500 pounds from all of the stuff that you've removed from your wardrobe. So you then have that 500 pounds to buy the items which you have on your list 
And that's where the fun comes in. That's where you can get searching all those secondhand bargains, or you can have a look. There's still nothing wrong with buying new, but just make sure that you're buying quality so that it lasts. Right, that's it from me. I really enjoyed like talking about this kind of topic. I feel like it's something I could talk about for hours but I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful in some way. If you have found, and this is like a little begging moment for me, if you have found a really good secondhand bargain, please share it and upload it with the hashtag secondhand but grand and tell us about the item. Where did you buy it? How much did it cost? Because it's little bargains like this £9.50 vintage Burberry blazer that I think act as a little dangling carrot to entice other people to start shopping secondhand more. And if you've got any questions in general about anything, as always, do leave them down in the comment section below and I will get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Bye.